didn't expect an African airline doing like that. Ethiopia, to me, I felt like it's not the richest country in Africa, but how on earth they have a large airline with such a more than fleet? Do you have to pay for your flight training as Ethiopian? not a full flight in business class but in the economy is packed and the seats are not the latest uh, 121 these are 222 so if you're on the window you have to hop over somebody this is our Ethiopian traditional dress it's like a robe basically it must yes. be comfortable it is comfortable, comfortable. It is comfortable. Yeah, it's beautiful yes, yes. Yeah. thank you okay my name is Peter with me today first of Selbrook today our uh, flight is from uh, Vienna to Aris. It will take us 5 hours and 45 minutes. We'll be climbing 7,000 feet. How tough is the uh, selection process to be able to get into the academy as a pilot training? Well, it's, it's we have to go through a lot of process. Uh, we did um, some aptitude tests. Uh, we do simulator tests as well, training, you know, just to basically know whether you you're the kind of person who can be a pilot, you know, and right. uh, we do some uh, medical tests as well, just to evaluate us. And is, is, do you have to pay for your flight training as Ethiopian? No, as an Ethiopian, uh, the the company will cover it for you. Then uh, you will work through throughout the years to pay it back. You know? Smelling good in the galley in the economy, and I came down to check. What are they doing? What kind of meal they have for tonight's dinner? Yeah, welcome to Economy Class, the Red Airlines Economy Class. We are about to serve dinner. We have fish and chicken, both comes with rice. We also have a starter, desserts, white chocolate mousse. Before landing to Addis, we also have another service, which is Iopra service. It comes with muffin, tea, coffee and juice. So enjoy the flight. We have some fruits, cheese, selection of cheese. Serve, um, you know, like a restaurant quality, and I didn't expect an African airline doing like that. Uh, the catering came from Brussels, so that was a Flemish style cod. The only thing is the service was a little slow. Now it's over two hours, they're finally finishing the dinner, and I'm gonna shut eye and get some rest. Hopefully before landing, I'll wake up to see the sunrise. had about two hours sleep. The bed here, the seat here became very narrow when you go fully flat. Especially the foot weld is tiny and uh, it's quite narrow. The padding was very good. So while we are taxiing, I saw lots of new modern airplanes, 350, 787, 777, and Ethiopia to me, I felt like it's not the richest country in Africa, but how on earth they have a large airline with such a modern fleet, I'm dying to find out and discover in the next two days. Hi, bye, see ya. Hi Sam, have you been to this terminal? No, this is the new terminal, right? Not the old one, I transited in the old one many years ago. Now it's been like two years since we start operating this terminal. The crowds are coming in the morning. Yeah, early, early morning. How many passengers in the morning go through here? Up to 10,000 sometimes. 10,000 yeah, passengers to Africa, everywhere. Yes. I landed here two hours ago and I haven't stopped. And then I continue plane spotting. There's so much interesting movement. This is a new terminal. They joined the old terminal to make a one kilometer long terminal walk. How many gates do we have here? We have about 21 gates now. 21 gates. Yes. How many yes. aerobridge? Aerobridge, we have nine. Nine. Yes. And uh, guess what? The biggest airplane, the 777-300, they go to Nigeria, Lagos, Abuja. And then I see 787, Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar. These are tourist places, Cape Town. Yes. And then you have Harare, Lusaka, West Africa, East Africa, North Africa, South Africa. It's really interesting at this airport. You see tiny GAs like Diamond, Cessna, and also the 777 behind. So this is where the academy 
uh, they told me they train the pilots starting with GA and fly in an international airport environment. Hey, welcome to Ethiopian MRO, which is the biggest MRO in the entire Africa. So we do have six hangars. That one is hangar number one where Angola aircraft is parked and we do have this hangar number two for Key 400 and that is hangar number three where we maintain triple and S350 fleets and this one is hangar number four where we work on a cargo conversion of Boeing 767 aircraft. So I, I actually see two doors right this main cargo door you cut and there's a little section here, there's also a hole there. Yes. What's happening with that little section? Okay, this aircraft is Boeing 767-300 aircraft. For this aircraft, there are two doors around the wings. Ah, uh, the overwing exit Over door. Overwing, there are two doors. Now we are going to remove those two doors, doors and we are going to plug it with another plug. Look at this, you can see the green mantle here. Isn't this cool? In four months time, a whole passenger 767 gets a new life to become a cargo freighter. Looking forward to see this airplane go back to fly. Sam, this is S350 uh, passenger uh, converted cargo freighter. So let's go inside and look. Huh? It's very interesting because you use such a new airplane for carry cargo. Yeah. Usually cargo has very old airplanes, right? Oh, it used to be the case, but now thanks to the situation, we have to use it. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Oh. Well, this is fun going through a narrow passage. Imagine these are all the seats here. Now it's all load of cargo and very colorful cargo. I bet this is uh, coming from somewhere in Africa. And uh, it is really also interesting to see these are manually loading. There's no pallets here. There's no, you know, automation. So this is all carried by manpower. Okay, Sam, this aircraft came from uh, China and going to Lagos, Nigeria. So we have such kind of operation every day which we do make sure that all these cargoes are carried in the cabin and reach to their final destination. Yeah, Sam, this is a business class. We are only changing the economy class for the loading purpose. So the business class remains as this. And here we have uh, our cabin crew who will be looking into the, uh, the, the entire flight. Ah, the... you guys go to arm the door, right? Oh, yeah. Arm the door and security and, uh, and also serving the uh, cockpit. The cockpit. Beautiful sunset. What a way to end the day to see the behind the scenes operation of an airline. Quite a long flight, six hour across the African continent. The problem with this configuration is if you have a window seat, you feel really private. If you have an aisle facing seat, maybe less private. So not all the seats are the same in business class.